The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. I'm your host, Brianne Tom, filling in this week for Emily Enanuevo. Tonight's show is all about food for the brain. How does food affect your mood and your mental functioning? And here to explain it all is holistic nutritionist Rita Mustafa. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Brianne. You're no stranger to this show. No. You know a little bit about everything when it comes to taking care of yourself, it seems. Try. Yep. Yes. And today we're talking about the brain mm -hmm. and how it is actually what you put in and what you don't put into your body that really does affect that. That's right. Right. So food is fuel, right? So it really what you're putting into the body is either going to feed the brain or starve the brain, right? Which completely makes sense, but I'm sure a lot of people don't either want to admit that. But <laughs> you've got some good news for some people. Like it's not necessarily eating terrible, terrible tasting things that are going to make your brain function, you know? That's right. That's right. So, so we've got a lot of topics to cover. You've got a lot of information to share. So uh, brain food, what does fuel the brain? So the brain is actually fueled by sugar, glucose. Which is good news. Which is good I news. I like sugar. <laughs> but it's the type of sugar right. or the type of food that we're putting in that's going to break down into the simple sugar that's going to either fuel the brain or, feed the, or, or starve the brain. Okay. Right? So when, when we talk about fueling the brain, we want to we try and put more foods into the body, especially carbohydrates, because okay. what will happen with carbohydrates once we've digested them is they actually break down into the simplest form, which is sugar. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether it's going to be, let's call it a good carb or a bad carb. If it's a carb, that's a, the end result is sugar. Okay. And so eating complex carbohydrates, things like quinoa and oats mm -hmm. and things like that, um, they actually break down nice and slowly in the body, okay. right? Because we've got fiber in there, we've got other nutrients, and that will you know, slowly break down and slowly release sugar into our bloodstream. And that will eventually feed our brain. Okay. Because right. you're right, you always do hear, everyone knows carbs equal sugar. Mm -hmm. But there's a very big difference between having, you know, say like a big plate of, I don't know, spaghetti or something that's just white pasta and having something like quinoa. That's right. So people that's need right. to understand the difference between mm -hmm. the two. That's right. So the complex carbs, they're going to break down slowly, release sugar slowly. Um, it'll feed the brain. Focus should be good, concentration should be there, you know, everything is good. So it's longer lasting? It lasts longer, You're, a person is usually satisfied longer, like they can go, you know, they can go from breakfast to lunch yeah. and be satisfied and, and full and not necessarily looking for, you know, that, that sugar kind of fix. Right, because you kind of get hooked on it after a while. You do, yeah. that's right. Yes. If everyone likes that sugar, mm -hmm. myself included, I will admit, but it's nice to know the difference. So. Complex carbs are what we're looking for. That's what people should be looking for. And what are complex carbohydrates for people that don't like? Like, what are good examples of complex so carbohydrates? So over here, uh, these are all considered complex carbohydrates. Okay. Complex carbohydrates are the carbohydrates or foods that have not been processed, so they haven't been stripped of fiber and other uh, nutrients, okay. right? So quinoa is a, is a great example. It's becoming more popular. It's a whole grain, um, and it's, it's so simple and easy to prepare. Um, for me, it wasn't. But for, that's just well, me. I, I definitely didn't have the right recipe for it. For people, so uh, for example, we were talking about whether you eat quinoa hot or quinoa cold, and you like it both ways. I like it both. So what would you recommend to people if they're just starting out with quinoa, what would be the best way for them to, to prepare it? So I would prepare it like you would a rice dish. So if, if you're making um, a stir fry, you can use you can use the quinoa. If you're using like a risotto, you can use the, that as as you use it as you would rice. Okay. Yes. So you can either do it with, you know, a tomato sauce, you could do it with, uh, if it's a cold salad, you could do it with balsamic, just not too much balsamic. That's what I found out mm -hmm. the hard way. And how long does it usually take to cook quinoa? So the way I, I cook it is basically um, boil the water, add the quinoa, boil it for 15 minutes. Uh, covered, take it off the heat and let it sit for five minutes, and then you're done. And then you're That's done. it. Okay. Um, so you have some other examples here of good complex carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. what, what else do we have here? So there, we have oatmeal. So oatmeal again is another. Who doesn't love oatmeal? <laughs> so oatmeal, great breakfast food, right? Um, eat, again, full of fiber, slow, slowly breaks down in the body, keeps you full for a very long time. 
um, and especially once the cooler kind of weather gets here, it's a nice warm it's nice food to start to have the day with that. Absolutely. That's right. mm -hmm. And then we've also got um, what, what's that? Multi seed spelt. So spelt is actually um, an alternative to to wheat. Okay. So we'll be talking about wheat and some of the issues okay. that people may be having with wheat. But Absolutely. you know, again, anything like spelt or kamut, which alternate, which are alternatives to wheat, they're, they're also considered whole grains. And this last one here is. And that's rice, brown rice. Okay. Right? That one just happens to be sprouted. Is there a difference between sprouted between? makes it easier for digestion? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting. So this, these are good examples for people out there these that are, are looking for what a good complex carbohydrate is. Simple foods, breakfast. Yep. We've got breakfast, snacks, dinner, everything covered here. Mm -hmm. um, and refined sugars and carbs. What are those? Is that what we're looking so at over here? So this is this group over here. So we'll call those the bad carbs. Okay. But basically, um, the if if we compare. The, the complex carbohydrates, and remember how I said they break down slowly in the body, mm -hmm. and then the body eventually, you know, the, it, the, the sugar will get to the brain, and that right. becomes food. Whereas when you eat something like a simple carbohydrate or a refined food, like white sugar, white flour, white rice, what happens when you eat these foods is, the, is you end up getting a lot of sugar in your bloodstream all at one time. So it's almost like you're just dumping sugar into your bloodstream. That, hence the kind of sugar high that you That's get. That's right. So people feel great they love it right. it makes them feel good for a short period of time and and actually what happens is none of that actually gets to the brain because what happens is the body will release insulin something to take all that blood out of the out of right to, to take all that sugar really. out of yeah. the blood because it's just too much all at once it can't it can't use all of that okay so these are good so examples. it stores it instead instead right so this and is what we should be avoiding as far i mean any, everything in moderation, Absolutely. right? But as far as fueling the brain, mm -hmm. this is not the way to go. That's that's not going to fuel the brain. Okay. And uh, another thing we were going to talk about is oh, carbohydrates. Every, I mean, I know a lot of people that mm -hmm. love carbohydrates. Can you become addicted to them? Sure. I mean, especially these kind. Okay. Especially this yeah. kind, because it it what happens with the refined sugar is it gives you that buzz, we'll call it, right? It yeah. makes you feel good for a little while, and then because the body takes all that sugar and hides it into your cells. And then within a couple hours, your blood sugar is now low again. So what do people do? They want more sugar. Yeah. So they start put sugar back in. And it's sort of this roller coaster ride of, okay, lots of sugar to no sugar. And then lots of sugar again to no sugar. Whereas if they did something more of a complex carbohydrate, it would be a longer steady. lasting. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's more steady. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, another uh, thing we were going to talk about is hypoglycemia and its symptoms. That's right. What is hypoglycemia? So hypoglycemia is what happens actually when you when you start to do a lot of the refined sugars, that high and low. Okay. Hypoglycemia basically stands for it basically is low blood sugar. Okay. Right. So even though you may be eating a lot of, let's call it junk food, and you're putting lots of sugar in the body, the body's not utilizing it the way it should, and so the brain is still looking for food, looking for fuel. Is are a lot of people facing this nowadays with the kind of food that we have available? Unfortunately, yes. That's why I think type 2 diabetes is there's a lot more of that now because if you stay in hypoglycemia long enough, it you know, it could potentially become type 2 diabetes. And the types of symptoms people have if if they do if they may think that they have hypoglycemia, they may not even know what would they be experiencing. So some people might might notice things like irritability, um, dizziness, um, you know, depression. Even um, some people even will have think of kids aggressive behavior. Okay. So these are all like signs and symptoms like there's an imbalance somewhere. All right. So if anyone's sensing this, they may need to get checked for hypoglycemia. That's right. We're going to have much more with Rita when we come back after the break. So please stay tuned. And welcome back to In the Know. Today we're talking about everything that fuels the brain with holistic nutritionist Rita Mustafa. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, we covered a lot in the first block, and we've got even more to cover in this next segment. So mm -hmm. we're talking about what fuels the brain, and this time we're going to talk about gluten right. because it seems to be everywhere. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone has allergies to it now, mm -hmm. and maybe they, maybe they always have, or maybe now it's just more common. Um, but when it comes to gluten, what is gluten? So gluten is actually the name of a group of proteins okay. found in wheat, rye, and barley. Okay. Um, so, so again, gluten is basically, think of it as a protein. Okay. So it's a protein in these foods. And for some people, um, especially when we start talking about gluten, a lot of people think gluten only relates to digestive type issues. And it doesn't. It can have, um, you know, neurological type side effects, and it can also affect um, things like concentration and focus. and and all of that stuff. So 
Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, about gluten okay. and, you know, maybe talk about some of the sensitivities and some symptoms that people and, might and, have. And am I right have. to say that a lot of people seem to be having sensitivities and allergies to it? I mean, it, and I'm not sure if it was something that's always been here or if it's developed over time, but either way, people are more aware of the fact yes. now. Yeah. So when it comes to the sense, the, is there a difference between a sensitivity and an allergy? That's right. So okay. an allergy is where the body is actually giving us an immune response, and it's, and it's fairly quick. Okay. Right? So we eat, uh, so an example, someone who is celiac mm -hmm. has an allergy to gluten. So when they eat products that contain gluten, they'll actually get almost immediately cramping, uh, pain, spasms, maybe even diarrhea, that type of okay. thing. So it, it's, it's immediate. Whereas someone who has a sensitivity, um, it shows up, doesn't show up necessarily as, a, as an allergy yet, like right now, but yeah. it can show up as maybe, you know, depression or anxiety, but two, three days from now. So it becomes almost uh, is affecting your brain in that way, Absolutely. And mentally and emotionally. and. So it's not just a physical It's thing. not just physical. It's not just digestive, absolutely. Okay. No, so it can affect. So can a sensitivity develop into an allergy? Um, it's hard to say. For some yeah. people it may. Okay. Um, usually a, um, a sensitivity, I guess if it's gone unchecked for, for a long period yeah. of time, I guess it can develop into okay. an allergy. So if people uh, are allergic to gluten, um, you were saying some of the symptoms that they may have. What are, like, uh, the the scope of it as far as the the lesser symptoms to the more severe symptoms as far as allergies go like how would people know um say they're just starting to have allergies to it what would they be so thinking? um so again allergy allergy i usually think digestive yeah. so um unfortunately with an with a gluten allergy it takes such a long time to yeah. get to get diagnosed because of all the different symptoms so a lot of people will be diagnosed with ibs first for the longest time and then eventually the body will just um because with celiac disease or an allergy to gluten, it, it's actually damaging the small intestine. So it could be happening and doing a lot of damage for a long time for before a long anyone time. finds Absolutely. out. Absolutely. So when the body finally just, you know, you're malnourished and your body is not absorbing any, any of your nutrients anymore, that's, that's typically when people will actually get tested and diagnosed. But mm -hmm. for a long period of time, they've gone with a lot of different symptoms and not really been properly diagnosed, okay. I guess. And um, so uh, the next question would be, is there testing available then? You said that you Absolutely. have to go through a lot of stages, mm -hmm. but when it gets to that point, what do they do for testing? So there's different types of testing. So you can actually go to your medical doctor and ask for um, um, celiac test. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a blood test. Yeah. Um, but then in my office, what we do is we actually do the sensitivity testing, which is okay. different than what a medical doctor to would do. To see whether it's sensitivity or an actual allergy, right. which is important to know. Yeah. So because someone can have a sensitivity, and like I said, it's not a true allergy where people are actually feeling, you know, digestive type issues, but, but yet maybe they have a lot of depression and it's they can't figure out why. It's frustrating too, to mm -hmm. not know and to be kind of said, well, it could be this, it could be this. And then, and especially when it's a sensitivity and not an allergy, you think I know there's something wrong there, exactly and that's and that's what I done. hear a lot of yeah. clients say right so when we do the testing I don't just test for gluten sensitivity I test there's about 95 or 96 different foods oh, wow. including you know uh, dairy products fruits vegetables all the different grains okay. um, that type of thing so there's many foods that I test not just so let's gluten. talk about what we have here as far as, because I assumed, I'm like, oh, this doesn't have gluten in it, but it does. It does. So let's so talk about right. some of the products we have here. Uh, the, are these two different types of cereals here? Right. So the first one, which is the, they look like mini wheats, I guess, right? Yep. So that would be the, um, the organic version. But wheat, whether it's whole wheat or white flour wheat, it, it will contain gluten. Either so way. So it doesn't matter which one you get, yep. it will contain gluten. Okay. Um, but then if someone is still trying to avoid gluten, just picking up, so the next one is, the, is a, like a corn type cereal, right? So you think corn, corn doesn't have gluten. And that's this one here. That's a, okay. that one there. But if you read the ingredients, it does have it corn, does. like wheat flour in there, along with other, okay. like corn and things like that. So if gluten is really something you're trying to avoid, then um, you want to make sure your products don't contain anything with wheat. And over here, is, is this an example of a cereal that they could have that wouldn't contain wheat? Exactly. So rice is gluten-free, quinoa is gluten-free so these are all things quinoa, that again that's, that's right magic so food quinoa is very <laughs> popular in my world yes so we do a lot of quinoa type products okay. and mm -hmm. why do we have uh, the almond breeze I've had this before I think it's delicious not that I'm trying to endorse a product but I do 
really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we have this here for this category? Um, so when it comes to sensitivities again and, and, and the brain, when we, we work with people uh, with kids, especially with autism mm -hmm. or ADHD, what ends up happening is when we change their diet and eliminate not only gluten but also the dairy products, mm -hmm. they tend to do a lot better, especially with autistic children. We see, you know, there's more eye contact, you know, they, um, their, their focus is longer, they can concentrate longer on something, you know, so they start to see really great improvement by eliminating both gluten and dairy. Interesting. Right? And so those are things that, you know, as kids, I mean, growing up, that's what we had, that's milk right. and milk and gluten and everything. That's so right. yes. it's very different to know how the world is now. Like we're just more aware, I think, I of think, everything. Yeah, more awareness for sure. Now I want to make sure I get to this delicious stuff that you've baked here. I'm going to tilt this up just to make sure the camera can see it. What is this that I'm holding up here that you? So this made? is a gluten-free recipe from my cookbook. Uh, I wrote a wheat-free, dairy-free cookbook. Um, which is available on my website, oasishealth.ca. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a pumpkin, it, it's a pumpkin muffin. So good time of year to use up the pumpkin or, you know, you can use canned pumpkin, of course. Okay. And gluten-free, it uses actually, I've, I've used coconut flour in there. And do you notice a difference in taste between it having gluten or not having gluten in it? There definitely will be a difference in taste. Um, you know, when you use wheat products, wheat products not only make things look nice and, and spongy and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they rise very nicely and things like that. So when you start switching over to, like, gluten-free, it is different. Not necessarily a bad change. Not just bad, a change just in itself. That's right. All right, we're going to have lots more coming up, so be sure to stick around. We'll have more after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to In The Know. We're talking about fueling your brain. We are here with holistic nutritionist Rita Mustafa. You are just enlightening us today. Good. We covered some delicious, yummy baked goods that are gluten-free in the last segment. Uh, and now we're going to be moving on to macronutrients mm -hmm. in the brain. Did I say that? That's macronutrients? right, macronutrients. And well, what are they? <laughs> so macronutrients <laughs> are basically nutrients that the body needs in larger quantities okay. um, for normal growth and development, right? So the main macro macro <laughs> macronutrients <laughs> are uh, carbohydrates, fats, and, and proteins. Okay. So those are our macronutrients. And we keep coming back to carbohydrates, which I like mm -hmm. because I'm a big fan, but I'm learning <laughs> the difference between complex carbohydrates and non-complex carbohydrates? Yeah, or simple sugars. Or simple sugars. Yeah. Okay. So um, carbohydrates, let's talk about those again. Um, how do they fit into this category here? So again, going back to carbohydrates, right? Putting in good complex carbohydrates that slowly release sugar into your bloodstream is going to fuel the brain. Okay. So it's going to improve um, um, focus, concentration, memory, all that stuff. So we want good carbohydrates in the body all the time. Absolutely. Right? So we always want to get a little bit of carbohydrates into the body. And do you think with age, too, it makes a difference? Like, kids, they would have more focus in school, and when they're listening to their parents, they would actually pay more attention. <laughs> attention. We can always hope, right? Mm -hmm. But do you think that that would make a difference if they actually were getting these kind of carbo complex carbohydrates as opposed to... They, yeah, parents should notice a difference by switching over to the complex carbs mm -hmm. as opposed to the simple sugars, again, which are going to give you quick energy for yep. a little bit, and then you crash, and then... Now Ooh, we're looking kids for more that sugar. That. Exactly. Bouncing off the walls. That's right. So we've got the favorite. Where's the quinoa? Right here. There's quinoa. There's quinoa over here. We talk about it every time. I'm. You're going to give me a good recipe. I'm convinced that before uh, <laughs> before we leave today because I I had no luck with this, but I know everybody loves quinoa. I and, do. I know I do. And you were telling us it's it simple lot. enough to yeah. cook, hot or cold. Hot or cold. And um, and what what else do we have here? We so also again, have... we have something made with spelt, I believe. Uh, oh no, that one's kamut, which is another whole grain, right? As a, an alternative to wheat. Okay. Not an alternative to gluten, but an alternative to wheat. There's a lot of different wheat alternatives out there now, mm -hmm. I, and Absolutely. I feel like they, they weren't always. Uh, they, I mean, it wasn't always as well known. Now there's so many exactly. different. Exactly. There's more awareness. People are becoming more aware of what you know, what foods they can and cannot eat. What is it comparable to, if you were to Like eat wheat. Them? That would be the closest to wheat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we also have here, just hiding in behind here. What is this one here? So, uh, that's, oh, that's omega-3. So when we're going to talk about healthy fat, okay. we'll talk about the omega-3s. Okay. So let's go um, to the next topic then. Prob the problems with too much refined sugars and carbs. You were saying that it's the spike. It's the spiking. It's, it's the, it's, if you're going to do a lot of refined sugars, you have to know that your focus, your concentration, it's not going to be there. And especially if you're feeding your children with, you know, simple sugars or they just, you know, aren't used to eating the complex stuff, it could cause behavioral type issues, especially when we're talking about school. Absolutely. Right? So 
Yeah, so that's, that can be an issue. And so what do we have in the center here, the center area? I might have to hold up a couple of them here. Yeah, what do we have? so... So again, ma uh, another macronutrient is our fats, right? Okay. So the body, is, when we think about the brain, the brain is actually two thirds fat. So which we were talking about, and I can't yes, believe that. But a, it is, it's true. It's a lot of seventy-five right. percent water or something like that. Or? Well, our body is seventy percent water. I should know this. I feel like I should know this from biology class. <laughs> um, but but in terms of fats, our, our brain relies on good essential fats, and um, it, which is you know something to focus on because what our body's actually looking for is essential fatty acids. So right. not just any fat, not just, you know, a, a steak here and there yeah. is going to fuel our brain. It won't. So what we need to do is actually get things like essential fatty acids, and those are our omega-3s, which you can... Is that what this is here? I'm so, going to hold it up for the camera. So that is... So omega-3s break down further into something called DHA and EPA. Okay. And when it comes to focus and concentration, especially in children, but even adults, DHA is what... Your, what your brain is actually looking for. And how would you take this, like for so, example? So DHA can be purchased as a liquid, as, as the one you're holding there, um, but can also be, um, you can this also get it in um, like capsule versions. Okay. Right, so. Is there any taste to it? Can yeah, so depending on what you get. The first one you held up was a vegetarian uh, version, so it's from plants and um, marine uh, source or sea vegetables, okay. I should say. Um, so it's not a terrible taste, um, but again, some people might love it. Some, some people, people might, but they not have like an it. alternative. They have an That's option, right. right? So you can go to a capsule version where you just swallow and you don't need to taste anything. Um, and then you can also do so. There's vegetarian versions of mm -hmm. omega three, and then there's uh, animal sources of omega three, like the your fish, fish oils. oils. And everybody knows about fish oils. Everybody knows that it's so great. It's so great for them. Um, I have never actually seen it in this form in a liquid form. I've always taken it just in a capsule, mm -hmm. um, but. What, what, how, let's talk about this form here. Yeah, so a liquid form, some people prefer the liquid, some people don't want to do a, 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 gel, a gelatin capsule, or some people just can't swallow the capsules. Because right. so they're sometimes big. They are quite yeah. large. And um, so you can purchase it in a, in a liquid, and the liquids come flavored. So you'll, they'll usually be like a, either an orange extract in there or a lemon extract okay. to kind of mask Masks the taste of the fish. Gotcha. Um, okay. So yeah, so if you really just can't get past the taste of the fish, you can you can choose to do a more of a vegetarian type of omega three. Okay, and quickly, I just wanted to mention this. What is this one here? So is that's this? flax oil. That's flax oil, right? So flax so flax seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds. Those are all great omega three type foods that you can add into your diet very easily, right? Just pour so it you, on top of a salad or yeah, something. As long it, as it's the oil, though. I've you can do people, oils. You have to crush it, right? To if make you're sure doing you seeds, especially flax seeds, they should be crushed okay. to get the benefits of it. Um, otherwise, it's, it's still beneficial, but more like a like a fiber type okay. source, not so much omega three. But if you're doing smoothies in the morning, especially, you can you easily throw in oils oh, and yeah. seeds and nuts, and you can easily get mm -hmm. your omega threes in that way. Now we've got one minute till break, and I wanted to touch uh, over here. We've got the proteins. We were talking proteins. protein shakes. Let's talk about what you've got here. What, what are the importance of the proteins? So proteins are going to break down into something called amino acids. And these amino acids can um, actually affect the brain by... Uh, there's actually neurotransmitters in the brain that, that communicate uh, to different cells. And so the protein is going to help that communication. So you want more focus, more concentration, make sure you're getting proteins into your yeah, diet, whether it's in the form of a you know, vegetarian source of protein powder or eggs or meat or fish. You've got a big test coming up. You make sure that you stock that's up right. on that because it's going to keep you focused. That's and, right. And, yeah. so, and eggs are good too. Eggs are a source of protein. Absolutely. How many would you say a day just to be, just, um, you know, to be up on your protein? I, I would I would probably do eggs maybe two three times a week okay. as long as there's no allergy or something. It doesn't matter how you cook them as long as you no yolks and everything. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna go for uh, another quick break and we're gonna have lots more coming up. So be sure to stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to In the Know. Today we're talking with Rita Mustafa about everything brain related. We're getting smarter, not only by <laughs> listening to you, but by learning what we should be fueling the brain with. Mm -hmm. uh, last segment we talked about macronutrients, and this segment we're talking about. Macronutrients again are vitamins and minerals, but our body needs them in sm smaller quantities. Okay. Right? 
Hence the macro and the micro. That's right. Gotcha. That's okay. right. So smaller quantity. Last uh, last segment we talked about proteins um, and good fatty acids, um, like acids, uh, like fatty acids. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Fish oils and stuff like that. Uh, this time, so what do we need in small quantities? What do we have over here on this side? So. Um, the main the main nutrients I think about or vitamin or minerals I would think about when it comes to brain function. Um, the first one I think about are B vitamins. Okay. Right. So our B vitamins is actually um, what you think about when it comes to stress. B think of B as your stress vitamin. Okay. So when someone's under a lot of stress, what happens is um, the body ends up ends up uh, increasing your heart rate, it increases your blood pressure. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on. Right. And that can temporarily um, increase your your focus and your concentration but over time if you're constantly under stress that's going to wear wear you up basically. Oh, absolutely. Right? So mentally you're getting tired and then your body's just physically exactly. getting drained as well. That's right. So what do we have here that are good examples of B vitamins? So your B vitamins things like brown rice so okay. Um, we have noodles here made with brown rice, but you know, up. just regular brown rice would uh, contains B vitamins. Things like black beans, your legumes are going to contain uh, B vitamins. Um, salmon, your nuts and seeds. Um, so, those, so if you're eating whole grains, whole whole foods, you're basically getting some B vitamins into you. Um, but still, if if stress is still kind of in the background, I would still consider maybe doing a B, B vitamin separately. Is that what we have over here? These are so these B vitamins. So the here? smaller one to your right there here? is uh, mm -hmm. B12. So okay. what some studies have found are uh, when when um, when you start supplementing with B6, which is one of the B vitamins, B12 folic acid, it can actually help um, improve uh, and actually uh, diminish signs of things like Alzheimer's, oh, okay. um, but decrease inflammation in the body. So, you know, less prone to strokes and, and um, heart attacks and things and like that. So this is B12, this B12, one here. yeah. What's the difference? Because I always read about getting B vitamins, but you sh should you get B6, B12? What is the difference between the, the numbers bees. beside the Bs? So, um, when you buy a B complex vitamin, you're actually getting all of the Bs. So you're getting B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B12, folic okay. acid. So you're getting a, all the Bs that you okay. really need. Um, sometimes, uh, depending on what health issues there are, or if, let's say, maybe you're anemic, or let's say um, um, you just have a B12 deficiency, you're mm -hmm. a vegan, let's say, um, then you can actually do a B vitamin, uh, a B12 vitamin separately okay. on top of your complex and just one a day is that usually what, what you usually need that's it? pretty much all simple you need. enough that's right take. very simple and then we also if you're not a vegetarian is this mm -hmm. a, an, an example of what people can have as right well? so um, your B vitamins again are in whole grains but also your fish products uh, chicken things like that okay um, and the issue is more for vegans right so who don't do animal product so they tend to be a little bit lower in B12 and B12 is something that you get tested you can get tested when you go in for a physical right and, and is there anything any signs that you would know maybe you have B like you're deficient B yeah so especially um, B12 deficiency B12 deficiency can um, you can have anemia type symptoms so just feeling really tired and fatigued okay. um, there might be neurological type issues you might get tingling sensation at your uh, fingers and toes okay. that could be a sign of a B12 deficiency so there are there are signs that Absolutely. you can look for yeah um, and so what do we have in the middle here so um, so vitamin E type foods, right? Okay. So vitamin E is another um, another nutrient, let's say, that's really important for um, for our brains. Um, vitamin E is an antioxidant, so I'll talk a little bit more about antioxidants. But antioxidants are basically going to protect your cells, including your brain cells, okay. right? So things like pumpkin seeds and lentils, those are all great ways to and get vitamin E. And these are lentils e. here. Those are red lentils. They're really yeah. neat looking. I and mm -hmm. do you have to crush them, or how do no, you eat those? No, red lentils are wonderful. Um, I have a, a recipe in the cookbook, and you can make lentil soup, and it's a great, easy, fast, great hearty soup for especially this time of year it takes half an hour and you're done now let's talk about where people can get your cookbook in case because they're sure. here all these wonderful recipes where can they go to find out more so oasishealth.ca you can purchase my book online or you can go to amazon.ca or amazon.com uh, and you'll be able to find the book there so have you always liked to cook and then now you're just incorporating <laughs> these new healthy ways well yeah that i you know i like being in the kitchen and being a nutritionist for you know almost 10 years and working with with many different people with many different issues you know um, sometimes people get lost especially when you start to take food away from them they just 
don't know what to make yeah. or how to make things. And so that's really... You still really, want to have fun in the kitchen. That's right. And you want tasty food. And so that's basically how the book came about, was just to help my clients, you know, show them that there is actually food they can right. eat and enjoy. And then on the end here, we've got spinach. spinach Everyone knows yeah. spinach is great. Why is it great? So spinach has many benefits to it, but another nutrient that's great for our brain is, is uh, magnesium. Okay. Right? So magnesium helps uh, with cognitive function, so helps with um, you know, memory and judgment mm -hmm. and reasoning and things like that. So you want to make sure you're getting magnesium in. If you're a coffee drinker, let's say, um, you actually are, are actually leaching some of the, the nutrients out of your body, oh. and so you may need to supplement with magnesium or at least maybe try and decrease your coffee intake. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. And then you also wanted to touch base on medications as well. Yeah, so some people who are on medications, even birth control, um, antibiotics, that, that type of thing, they can actually, um, um, uh, what happens with with the vitamins and minerals, they actually start to lose some of the vitamins and minerals, or uh, they can block the absorption of some of these ni nutrients that we've been talking about, right? So, so things so that you would think would be helping you are actually can be harming they you. They can in the long be run. if you don't know, right? So working with a, a, pr a holistic practitioner or someone who who knows about you know interactions with different medications and what you should supplement with if you are needing to take a, a medication yeah. um, would come in handy. And know? I'm sure sometimes if they have started off taking you know, medications and then they kind of find out about the more holistic approach. I've heard people can just completely wean off of their Sometimes prescription they drugs can, yeah. entirely because of... Well, you think of vitamin E. Vitamin E acts like a blood thinner and a lot of people take blood thinners and so actually that's one of the ones where if you are on a, you know, are on a blood thinner, you don't want to go in and add vitamin E on top of things. So that's why talking with a holistic nutritionist is going to be really Helps important. Helps you know how to balance yes. it rather than, you know, doing more harm than that's good, right. really. That's right. You don't want to do more harm. That's why I was asking about the B supplements because I've, I've heard, you know, this, it's good to have this, but you don't want to have too much of this. But if you were saying if you could just get the a B, uh, what is it called? Complex. The, the complex one, then it should cover yeah, everything it, it for you. it covers everything and, you know, you do take it at breakfast or take it at lunch and you're good. Okay. Well, that... Has been, well, that was a very informative micronutrient segment. We're going to have more on uh, brain food coming up after the break, so stay tuned. Welcome back to In the Know. Today we're talking about fueling the brain. We have holistic nutritionist uh, Rita Mustafa here with us, and we've been talking about everything from proteins to complex carbohydrates. Um, and now uh, we are going to be talking about key questions to ask and tips for people. So if they've been watching this, they probably have a lot of questions and they might not know exactly what to ask. So um, one of the topics you wanted to talk about was how much sleep people need mm -hmm. to get. I know that that's important for, I know for me, for how I function. If I don't yeah. get enough sleep, and I know for a lot of people, you're kind of like zombies the next day. That's right. Sleep has a lot to do, has a big impact on concentration, right? So, and it's not even the... Quant like the quantity of sleep, it's not so much, oh, I need eight hours or six hours or ten hours, mm -hmm. it's the quality of sleep. Absolutely. So are you getting six hours but it's a, it's a good six hours sleep and you're not waking up in between? Or is it ten hours of sleep and you're waking up every five minutes or every two hours? Absolutely. Right? So really the, it's the type of sleep that you're getting that's going to impact focus, concentration, all of that Cause stuff. Because you feel such a difference when you have interrupted sleep as opposed to uninterrupted That's sleep. Right. And even sometimes I know, I notice a difference when I take, say, a 30-minute nap or an hour nap, I feel better after the 30-minute nap right. than I do after the hour. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure why that is, but I, it does matter the type of sleep that you get and the quantity of it yeah, that you the, do get. Yeah, it and, does, yes. And yeah. that really affects, and that does affect your brain. Mm -hmm. So the brain, the brain when you when you're sleeping, the brain is actually sort of recharging, if you will, okay. right? So if you can get that interrupted, yeah, yeah. that uninterrupted sleep, or even the little cat naps, so it's a great way to just recharge the brain, and mm -hmm. you wake up and you're usually refreshed and ready to go, yeah. right? Um, but when you have inter uh, interrupted sleep, so you know maybe you sleep with a snore, or maybe you have children that are waking you up at night, yeah. or whatever that may be. So if you're if you're not able to get that consistent amount of like you know, consecutive amount of sleep, I should yeah. say, then, you know, you're going to wake up groggy, you're going to wake up, you know, probably uh, cranky, yeah. <laughs> right, I and tired throughout the day. I will admit to that. <laughs> and now, oh, some of the things that you were talking about is um, there's people that snore. Mm -hmm. I know some people that have sleep apnea as That's well, right. which can be really scary sometimes if you are there to witness it and you're not the one with sleep That's apnea. Right. But what, what is that all about? So sleep, sleep apnea is where actually the person is actually not getting in enough oxygen. So what happens is um, 
they may be getting like not enough oxygen or at some point they might not even be breathing, right? That's so the, scary. So the body will actually wake them up and they may not even know that they're doing this like many times yeah. throughout the night. But um, yeah, so sleep apnea can be one of the reasons why a person wakes up groggy and cranky and you know, just not able to focus and function and concentrate well yeah. because they're being, their sleep is being interrupted. And now is that affecting the brain? Because if they are not getting oxygen, then they're not getting it to the brain. That's right. Is it doing any, I mean, it's scary to think, but is it doing any damage? It can lead to things like uh, high blood pressure and, you know, increased heart rate because, yeah, you're not getting in the oxygen that you need, right? And oh. you're not getting a deep sleep either, yeah. which is And what important. about snoring? I know it affects the other person. <laughs> yes. Does it affect the person who's snoring? <laughs> sometimes it can and sometimes it, it you know, it, it's more of the other person that yeah. it's annoying and waking up more than anything else. But, um, you know, snoring, you're still probably getting in the oxygen. It's just maybe it's a congestion issue. Maybe there's just a lot of fat around the neck and, yeah. or, you know, that type of they thing. They always have something that you can do something. They always have all these, like we were saying, there's so many solutions and alternatives now. So there are things that you can try. Absolutely. absolutely. And um, so we have a couple items here in front here. We want to talk about water, the importance of water. We were saying how much of this is made up of water? So we're 70% water, right? So that's mainly what we want to focus on when, we, when we're drinking things. So, you know, the co morning coffee is great, but, you know, there are people, I've had clients who drink coffee pretty much throughout the day and never touch a glass of water. So you have to think, how is the body going to cleanse itself? How, does, how do the cells get um, nutrition? Because isn't it dehydrating them by having the caffeine? Absolutely. And the brain is really dependent on a hydrated body. So if yeah. you're dehydrated, you can't expect to have clear focus, good concentration, that type of thing. So I, I know when I don't drink enough water, I get headaches. Exactly. And so, yeah. I mean, obviously it is affecting the brain because if it's giving people headaches, mm -hmm. that's a big sign of that's it right there. That's a big there. sign right there. Um, so any type of water, does it matter if it's distilled, if it's, you know, osmosis, whatever, this, yeah, that, or the I, other? I tend to generally uh, go towards reverse osmosis. Okay. I have a reverse osmosis unit at home that I use. Um, but generally I like reverse osmosis. Um, some people like distilled water. Um, and reverse osmosis, what, what does that mean? So basically what it does is it goes through a series of filters okay. and it basically removes a lot of the stuff that's in our tap water. So okay. there's hormones, there's viruses. Hormones in our tap water. There's hormones in our tap water, hormones yes. Hormones milk, hormones in <laughs> tap water, hormones everywhere, yes, my goodness. That, so there's a lot of things in our tap water, uh, even the fluoride, which is not that great for us. So there's a lot of things in our tap water we just don't necessarily need to put into our system. So by filtering it out, we're actually getting rid of some of that. And you that. can get uh, like uh, devices that you can attach to your tap or and, and it'll get rid of that. Yeah, that's okay. right. Now I also noticed something very familiar here. Uh, <laughs> I, I know a lot of people here at work, we get acupuncture done. I'm going to hold up a couple, uh, some of the acupuncture needles here. Let's talk about the benefits of acupuncture. So I benefit is a go. great tool. I, I, uh, I offer acupuncture at my clinic also. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. And I find okay. acupuncture is a really great tool for, for many things, whether yeah. it's anxiety, depression, um, whether, you, whether you're um, someone who has insomnia, that type of thing. It's amazing what it can do. Mm -hmm. And that you guys know all the pressure points. Now, the difference between the rather large looking needles and the little needles, it, is it different for different people? Is it different for different symptoms? What are, what's the difference between It really just needles? depends where I'm putting the needles, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing needles on your hands or your arm, I'm not going to use like a four inch needle, right? Yeah. But if I'm doing needles on... Nice. Yes, that's yeah. good. <laughs> if I'm doing it on the back side or the legs, you know, I might... Or a little I'm more tissue use, there. That's right. I'm going to use a longer needle because I need to go a little bit deeper. Absolutely. So yeah, the different needles are based on where I'm working in the body and I and you know there's 360 points on the body so there's there's a lot of different areas that I can focus on it's amazing I mean I I can speak highly of it because I've lived it it does look a little intimidating the mm -hmm. needles but you really can't even feel them For some the spots part. are a little bit more sensitive but that just means that you I find that I've been told that it's because I really needed it so <laughs> that's why I'm feeling it um, memory games I've heard about these I talked to my grandfather about this he is the best at crosswords and Sudoku that I've ever met I will never beat him um, so you've got a couple crossword puzzle books here yeah, so anything that's going to stimulate the mind whether it's learning a new language whether it's doing crossword puzzles whether it's you know just learning something new um, but always trying to keep your brain in you know always learning something or always active right and that's going to 
And that's going to help you as, as we age, right? So it makes sense. You know, got to keep your brain active in order to keep it functioning. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day I'll be my grandfather at Sudoku, <laughs> but I seriously doubt it. Um, so we flew through that one. We're going to come back. We have one more segment yeah. to chat with you about keeping the brain strong through different types of food. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to In the Know. We're talking about fueling the brain with Rita Mustafa. We have covered a ton of different topics. We even ran out of time about talking about we yoga did. last, but basically keeping calm is, is key, is <laughs> it's what we want to do. Yes. So uh, we're going to talk about antioxidants, and we have a ton of stuff in front of us here. Which way should we start? Let's start with antioxidants. Start over here? Okay. Yeah, so antioxidants are basically nutrients that are going to protect our cells, right, including our brain cells. And antioxidants come in many forms, many foods that contain antioxidants. Um, goji berries is one of the more um, delicious, becoming more popular <laughs> as a as a as a food. And uh, same with cocoa beans or cacao. Or, co or cacao, right? So what's the difference between cocoa and cacao? I, I know one's very raw form and one's. Uh, they're pretty much the same yeah. thing. The cacao is is usually the the raw form. So we've got you know, I'll give you the little these co cacao beans there. So those are the raw Can we beans. Can zoom in on my hand here? Um, that have not been roasted. Um, they're still in the shell. So if you actually take the shell off, you'll see the cocoa bean in there or the cacao bean. Um, and they smell good. Mm -hmm. they, they smell really yummy. So how would you how would you prepare these? Like what would you do? So with you these? can actually just eat them. Okay. You can just pop them in your mouth and eat them like. Just like, like a, like bean, a nut, yeah, like, like a nut. You're eating like an almond. Yeah, they're very, they're slightly bitter. So, but they do have that little. I didn't bit want to make that, a bitter face. Yeah. On TV. <laughs> they do have that chocolatey kind of yeah. um, taste to them because that's basically what chocolate is going to be made from, right? Okay. So it's the cocoa bean. But the benefit of the cocoa bean, um, especially if you can find raw. You can you can actually find raw chocolate bars now. Um, you They're can more available in the stores. Absolutely, health What food percentage stores? should you be, be looking for though? Because I know some of them have like seventy percent cocoa or seventy. Yeah, I'd say the higher the better. Yeah. I've even seen like ninety nine percent, which and is you notice really the difference between different. like milk chocolate and Absolutely. real yeah. cocoa. Yes, and you have to be prepared for that. That's right. <laughs> because so, if you take a bite of it thinking it's going to taste like a chocolate bar, yeah. it's a little different. No. You just need a little bit less. It goes you, a long way. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but I find once once you're used to the dark chocolate, it it's an acquired it's an acquired taste. But once you're there, it, nothing you really appreciate to the dark absolutely. chocolate. Absolutely, it's very rich. Absolutely. Yeah. So the so so chocolate is high in antioxidants. Who ever thought we are telling you chocolate? It's good Eat for chocolate. You. It's good for you, but it's, it's got to be the dark, the dark chocolate. The dark chocolate. And we've heard this a lot, and a lot. Of, and for baking, that's great because you want to bake with dark chocolate. Too. That's right. So. so instead of chocolate chips, when I'm making cookies, I'll actually take the cocoa beans or the cacao beans and crush them, and just put that into the into the mix, and that gives it that little bit of chocolatey taste. And and do you do the same quantity if you were doing, you know, like half a cup of this? Would you still do half a cup? You could. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I know that when I'm trying to do healthy recipes, I'm like, oh, do I do the same amount? Mm -hmm. And usually it works out for me. Um, so what else do we have up here in front of us? And here? so we mentioned the goji berries too. Mm -hmm. So in Chinese medicine, goji berries have been used for thousands of years, and uh, again, really high in antioxidants, which are going to protect your cells, right? Protect your brain. Um, and this, you can easily add the like goji berries into your, you know, cereal in the morning, into your oatmeal. Um, you can even add it to your tea, and then just drink the. Um, I mean, eat this. The, be the the seeds afterwards, mm. so really easy enough to add antioxidants into your into your daily routine. Um, Once they have, everyone has the tools and the information that they right. need. That's right. It's just yeah. very easy to add in. And you know, and other antioxidants include things like zinc. So zinc mm -hmm. is a really important antioxidant. The the food that's highest in zinc are, are oysters. Not everybody's going to like I oysters. Lo smoked oysters, do they count too? <laughs> I guess they do. I yes. love yeah. oysters. My parents gave it to me once when I was four years old. And I've loved them ever since. Okay, so my there mom you go. hates so them, but at four years old, she, you know, had to pretend she liked them because I like them so you much. Like so okay, so there you go. There that's we a go. Very so good that's high in zinc. zinc. Okay, that's right. and there's also zinc testing that I do in my office. Okay. so that's you know something that we can test for. It's just a little something that you drink, and it can tell us right away and, whether. And the benefits of having enough zinc, as if you, if say you're, would you have zinc deficiency? And if you can if have you zinc did, deficiency, what would you be? Uh, your immune system will be affected. Okay. Maybe you catch a lot of colds and flus. Um, for men, it's very important for their prostate. So there's a lot of benefits to zinc, not okay. just brain health, but in, but 
the whole body. Okay, yeah. good to know. Okay, so we're working our way along here. Yeah. What do we have next? So uh, Brazil nuts. So Brazil nuts. Here. nuts. That's the yeah. Here? Those okay. Brazil nuts uh, are rich in selenium, and selenium is another antioxidant that's really great for the body. Again, protects our cells. So just eating two to three Brazil nuts a day is that's is, all you need. That's all you need. And those are usually, I mean. We're getting to the holiday season. Those are usually mixed in with the the mixed That's nuts. Right. So just you know, pick those ones out. That's there you and go. Make sure that and you eat those ones. Eat up on your uh, on your Brazil nuts. Okay. Um, supplement wise, if you want to try and get more antioxidants in, you can do things like um, powdered, um, basically dehydrated fruits here? and vegetables. Yeah. So that that one's called Amazing Grass. Okay. And it does have. You know, like wheat grass and barley grass yeah. and things like that, um, but it also has fruits and vegetables. So it's just basically dehydrated and it's a powder, easy to add to a smoothie or your juice in the morning. So you wouldn't necessarily, you know, shake it with water and drink it. You could add you it can. to something. Or, you can. Okay. Some people don't mind it. My husband doesn't mind it. He'll just yeah. mix it. I've in tried wheat grass before. It tastes very green, but you, yeah, can, it, you almost feel healthy as soon as you drink it. That's right. I love, yes. So is it is similar to thing. that as far as taste Well, this goes? one's a little um, easier for people to do because there's like goji berries in there and there's a lot of fruit. Ah. So it kind of masks all the, gotcha. the grasses, right? Like what you were saying with the uh, fish oils and yes. <laughs> with citrus. You need to mask it a little gotcha. bit. So, gotcha. Yeah. And what is this here? Juice so pops? that is the same idea. Fruits and vegetables comes, but this one comes in a capsule version. Okay. So if you really just can't Find a way to get the powdered version into you. You can get it in through capsules. There's always alternatives for That's people. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we've got fruits and veggies right here. Everyone knows these are these are good for us. We, and, and why why should they be having these? Well, fruits and vegetables are going to contain antioxidants. Our antioxidants are vitamin A, vitamin C, mm -hmm. vitamin E, which we've talked about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables that's a great way to just easily get antioxidants into your system without having to necessarily take a supplement per se. And how much a day? I mean, would I want to eat those three carrots and like, is this an example of how much I should be having in a day or? No, it's just an example of, of foods that contain antioxidants. Yeah. But you know, you can do spinach, you can do kale, you can do broccoli, you can do... Is there certain veggies and fruits that you would say would lean towards more than others? You know, I like people to do more, try and do more vegetables as opposed to fruit. Some people okay. will will eat fruit throughout the day, which is wonderful, but, um, you there's know, sugar, though. there's a lot of sugar uh -huh. in there. So we're, and so if you can get the, the ve vegetables into you, then you're getting a lot of the minerals that you might not necessarily be getting from the fruit and, okay. and less sugar. And now my mother-in-law would love to see that you have a sweet potato up there. <laughs> um, potato. That is her thing. She loves sweet potatoes. Um, mm -hmm. And that's another great source of Beta carotene, yeah. so vitamin A, you convert to vitamin A, good for your eyes, good for your cells, it's an antioxidant. People are yeah. catching on to sweet potatoes, I think. Mm -hmm. And what do we have here? So that's the cookbook. This is your that cookbook we've been talking here? about. Yeah, so that's my cookbook. Um, Favorite so, recipe in there? Oh, so many. Um, <laughs> I'd probably say probably the chocolate cupcakes, ah. which are made with black beans. Chocolate cupcakes, my two favorite words. Yeah. <laughs> and they're made with black beans. And made with black like beans. Like the black beans that we had on the, on the, before. the Just can of vegetables. Black beans. How do you sneak those in? <laughs> so actually, that's uh, it's really it's a really really simple recipe, and actually I believe that recipe is also on my website. Wow. So oasishealth.ca, look for the chocolate cupcake, and so they can the find out more information by going to your website. They can also get it on Amazon, the cookbook. Yeah, Amazon.ca. And how many recipes would you say are in here? There's probably about 50 recipes in there. Okay. Each recipe has a, a photo that goes with it. It'll that's let you. That's important. Yeah. So it's <laughs> nice to know what the final product is going to look like. And it'll also tell you um, based on sensitivity. So they're all wheat free, dairy free, but some are also gluten free, some are egg free, some are soy free. Oh, and mm -hmm. so, uh, this is not just necessarily, necessarily good food for the brain, it's just overall. Overall. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else that we need to talk about really quickly? We're about to wrap up the show. We talked about, uh, you wanted to talk about dental fillings or dementia, which you wanted to touch about. Oh, well, quickly. you know, because we're talking about the brain, Alzheimer's, dementia, those types of things are a concern for some people. Mm -hmm. So, that's where hair analysis can come in. We can check to see if there's heavy metals, because heavy metals can contribute okay. to those issues. So, if that's a concern, yeah. Just get in touch with you. Get in touch they with me. Get in touch and with we'll you. There's testing. We basically testing. discovered that there's testing for everything, um, and there's a solution, and there's uh, you know an option for you whether you want to do it in capsules or whether you want to actually do it in the juice form. I want to thank Rita for coming by Thanks and teaching you. us all this. Be sure to tune in next time for more in the know.